My brother wanted to get uh, some kind of tape player thing so that he could make weird sounds. Uh, company Landscape makes the HCTT, or that's like a human-powered tape transport or something like that, where you can turn the tape by hand and make all kinds of goofy sounds. My brother said, you know, I'd really like to have a motor. And then he realized, uh, he had an epiphany, that he could just get a 50 cent uh, Walkman from the 80s and uh, use that. So let's see if this thing even works still. Oh, there we go. Yep. Especially if it was someone like Pete, who seemed like It works. Well, we'll start with that. Let's take it apart and see if we can make the motor change speed. There's a few screws on the back here. The real key here is can we get the motor to change speed because that would open up some really neat sound effects. Let's see if we can get this clip off here. Okay, nope, no screws under there. Let's pull out the batteries. Oh, there's a screw. Okay, there's the little motor. And it's got three wires. It looks like red, black, and yellow. Black one goes over here. It says M minus. That's motor minus. Red says M plus. So that must be the plus of the motor. And then uh, this yellow one, or sorry, this orange one. Looks like it's connected exactly to the red one. And that right there is the power in jack. So, uh, so the orange and the red go to the power in, which is four and a half volts. And then the black wire there is the ground. So let's go ahead and solder some wires in so we can use a power supply instead. Let's go ahead and solder some wires in here. Good, we've got two wires now we can hook up to the power supply. And I better make sure the power supply is set to about four and a half volts. You don't need to blow it out. Okay. 4.55 volts. Now while I was looking at this, I noticed there's a little pot right in there. It's hard to see, but that might be a motor speed control. And if we are that lucky, then we're done, because we can just pull that guy out, connect him to a real pot, and have a, volume, a, a speed control on the outside of this. That would be amazingly awesome. All right, let's plug some headphones in again. Turn it on. It's working. Now let's see if this changes the speed. Indeed, that is a speed adjustment, but it's pretty minor in terms of its uh, frequency range of the speed range. I don't have music right now, but here's some talking. They're slow and fast. Awesome. Now the question is, can we get more range out of it? Okay, so if I put this to measure the voltage on that little potentiometer, little trimmer. I get 2.2 volts at the nominal position. Or sorry, that's the minimum. And max speed, I think that was max. Oh, it was 2.55. I think I got that backwards. I think that's the slowest, 2.55. 2.2 .2 is, the, is the fastest. So if we can increase the range of that, we may be able to change the speed of the motor by a lot more. Well, I took the board off here and luckily it pops right up. You can see all the parts. I quickly traced a little sketch of the circuit, uh, but I cannot find this part number CI470 on the internet anywhere, so it's probably a house numbered part. So we're just going to have to uh, assume that we're not going to figure that part of the circuit out. 
and try to hack it some other way. Well, looking at this circuit, it seems like if I bypass the 270 ohm resistor and the uh, adjustable thing with this 100 ohm resistor, I can get it to go about twice the speed it's supposed to go. So that kind of tells me there was something on the order of 100 ohms minimum and a maximum, maybe a kilo ohm, but we'll have to see. Uh, to get a slow speed. Alright, I desoldered that 270 ohm resistor to take it out of the circuit here. Push that out of the way and put this back on because there's a switch that needs the circuit in place. Okay, so this is sort of the configuration. It looks like it's actually working the best. I hate to make this look like magic, but it was a little bit of magic to me too, so it's hard to explain how this works. I, uh, I put green wires on this pot thinking I'd only need two of them, and I ended up needing all three of them. So now I've got three green wires, and it's kind of hard to talk about which one's which. But anyway, I've got five, almost five volts going through this. When I hit play now, it plays, and I can turn it down pretty slow. And I can turn all the way up. So I get a really good range of speed, maybe about a factor of two or three, slow down and speed up. And what ended up happening, I had, uh, I'll use the soldering iron here. If I take this wire off, I could get it to, to slow down, but not to speed up. So that was the slowdown there, and then if I put that one back on, and take off uh, this guy, then I get the speed up. Now on the speed up side, there's a resistor that I added here uh, because without it, it gets really weird. There's a point where it goes faster and faster and then all of a sudden it's, it pretty much stops cold. And so I think that's probably a bad thing. There's probably a short in there if you go straight to a dead short. So I put a resistor in here and I started with 47 ohms and that worked, but it seemed like it was still pushing it a little bit weird. And I tried 100 ohms and it it sped up pretty fast, but I wanted a little bit faster, so I settled for 68 ohms here. Let me solder this wire back on before I forget where it was. Uh, so, I've got a nice speed control right now, I think. And, uh, again, I, I really don't know what these pins are. They're connected to a chip on the other side. Uh, this guy here. I think I tried to look up this part number, and I couldn't find it on the internet, so uh, I don't know what it is, but... It is the main device that's controlling the speed of the motor, so I'm sort of bypassing it on several edges here, trying to get the speed to change. So the next thing is I'm going to eliminate these batteries, because who wants to use batteries these days anyway? And instead I'm going to drill a hole in the, in the bottom here to mount this speed control. And I have an old USB cable here that I am going to wire up for the power. Uh, because, you know, a lot of people have USB chargers now, so I'm going to drill another hole for that to feed through, and that'll be the power source. And I found that if I vary the voltage on my power supply, uh, the speed of the motor doesn't really change. So it's happy to run at 5 volts, it's happy to run at 3 volts. So uh, this, this should be just fine doing it this way. So here we go. Right, I drilled the hole here for the uh, for the USB cable. Uh, normally I like to tie a knot in it on this side so that if somebody pulls it, it doesn't rip out of the circuit. But this wire is too thick, so I just wrapped some electrical tape around it. Uh, so hopefully that'll keep it in place. 
Now if you use USB cable, there's four wires, red, green, white, and black. Uh, green and white are signals, so you can just snip them off. We don't need any of the ground shielding. We just need the red and the black wire. And I left these ones on there from the battery thing, just I didn't want to forget which one was positive and which one's negative. So I'm doing a switch, just switch the cables one at a time here. And make sure we get them hooked up right. And I have a USB uh, charger here. Plug that into the outlet. And let's make sure this thing still works. There's high speed. There we go. We've got fast and we've got slow. Now we just have to button up the rest of the case and it's all done. Well, I hope you enjoyed working on this Walkman as much as I did. Taking something out of the 80s and making it do something really interesting. It was a fun project. <laughs>